Thank you. All those in favor? Moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Chris Olmstead, be resolved that the Protective Service Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region receives and files a March 16th OPP billing summary report. All those in favor? Question from uh, Councilor Jackson. Can we, because we have two OPPs, can we identify which one it was? I know I see tonight that we have the Renfrew one on the, on the uh, agenda. Uh, this, so this must have been the Upper Ottawa Valley one, just so we kind of know which is which. Yeah. So Renfrew's on there again? Well, the one that's on there is Renfrew. Okay, so Renfrew. But we only get one billing from the OPP, and it comes through Renfrew, I understand. It, it, like, this isn't... Well, it's big enough, it should be. Frankly, I don't. Uh, the only summaries I have received are from from Detachment Commander Colin Slate. So I I don't know if there's a separate one that we're supposed to be getting from Upper. Uh, Reeve Miller. My understanding was, unless I misunderstood them, that this was coming direct to you too. That's I get them. I have not been submitting them thinking they were coming in. However, I would like to give you this card and. He will fix everything for you. Thank you. The reason I was of that assumption is because the uh, stats that are on that are, are for the municipality and whole, yeah. And I think they both um, work on them as far as I understood. But we will verify that for sure if it's any bigger than that one. Is this the same report that's item 12-3, though, or is that, was that a different report? Same month, though. Yeah, that, the one was the bill, and the other one was the uh, quarterly overall report. Okay, we're getting lots of them. All those in favor? Carried. Be it resolved, oh sorry, moved by Charlene Jackson, seconded by Chris Olmstead, be it resolved that the Environmental Services Committee of the Township of Whitewater Region review the 2015 Aqua Annual Reports for the Cobden Beachburg and Haley Water Treatment Plants and for the Cobden Water Pollution Plant. Any questions? All those in favor? Carried. by Kathy Rigger, second by Dave McKay, be resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approve that the following bylaws be introduced, read, dealt with, numbered, signed by the Mayor and Clerk, and sealed and recorded in the bylaw book. 1. 1605-863, Groundwater Monitoring Agreement. 2. 1605-864, Use of the Unopened Road Allowance for Kowalski. Any questions? Councilor McKay? Uh, McLaughlin. Uh, I'm just wondering, I'll direct this to Steve. Do you know anything uh, further update on the uh, the wells that we're going to be put in? Did you? The uh, we're going to sign the agreement, um, and the wells will be drilled in the very near future. Um, this season, one's deep aquifer, one shallow aquifer. It's uh, it is in our road allowance. Um, there's lots of room there. It's going to be fenced. Um, I, I, d I did meet with them at the location and then took them to our plant as well. Um, that's all I can tell you for now. They wouldn't buy one of our plants? Is, uh... No. No. Okay, that, <laughs> that's where I was headed. I was hoping it could have been a double whammy. Any further questions? All those in favor? Carried. Oh, no, I asked. 
if there was any. I didn't get any. He's not going back. Moved by Dave McKay, seconded by Kathy Regier. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region receives and files correspondence one through five. Any questions? one at a time. Natural gas in eastern Ontario. Any questions? Number two, Bill 100, MPP, Yakabuski, page 46. Every, uh, Councillor Olmstead. Um, being on the Rex Association and negotiating the CN uh, trail, um, I've asked for input um, from uh, various community groups and uh, landowners that, that would be impacted by the trail and to get their their thoughts on Bill 100 and specifically to uh, John Yakabuski's article to uh, to get their thoughts whether they agree or disagree with his comments. Okay. So hoping to have that back shortly. Okay. It's um, a fairly dangerous situation when people start to uh, Make comments and uh, in, uh, in um, talk about laws that they don't understand. Because in this case, uh, I've been in quite a few meetings, but there was a possibility as many as 28,000 jobs could be affected by the misinformation that came forward. That's awfully serious. And so, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Olmstead, for doing that. That's quite important. Okay. I think it's it's important to understand people's interpretation of the bill because yep. I, I um, when we were at Good Roads, I did meet with the Ministry of Recreation. I can't remember the the lady's name. That, that that's uh, we've been going back and forth, so it's been a very good contact. Um, and it is the minister's uh, right-hand lady, so we, we've got a very good contact there. But uh, even they weren't sure of the wording of some of the bill, so it was it was way too open to interpretation. So I think they're going to clean up some of the language. And uh, John Yakabuski, or MPP, speaks to that that they it looks like they are going to clean up some of the language in that. Yes, that's correct. Any other comments? All those, in, oh, wait a minute, we got more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And uh, Pembroke Regional Hospital newsletter, any comments? None. Electricity cost, resolution support, and regulated gas prices resolu resolution request. Um, you want to ask uh, our CAO to draft a letter in support to bring back to us? Any comments, Councillor McLaughlin? I, I really don't think we need to have it brought back. I think we should have a letter of support sent to them uh, as soon as possible. I, I don't think we need to come back and read it. I think we we can trust our CAO to go ahead and draft the letter. Uh, Christine? I think what, the reason I'm suggesting I bring it back instead of um, presumptuously just drafting something for you to vote on tonight, they like to have a resolution from the council if it's in support. Um, so what I would do is draft a resolution and just bring it back that, that you could pass. And okay. then I'll send that on. I would be happy with that, but I think as soon as we can, because I think we do need to support these. They're uh, quite serious items, in my thoughts anyway, because there's quite a fluctuation, and uh, the price of uh, our uh, 
Hydro is just, our energy is unbelievable. It just keeps going up and up, so we need to do something. So we'll uh, vote it, uh, and have a consensus on that. All those in favor of doing that. Okay. Consensus is go for it. Moved by Kathy Raker, second by Dave McKay. Be re oh, I did put the two of them together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're gonna have a Are we doing both? Are we doing fuel prices as well as? Yep, yeah, as electricity. Electricity, okay. Yeah, Sorry. that's what I was asking for. Kathy, moved by Kathy Raker, second by David McKay. Be it resolved that the Council of the Township of Whitewater Region approve updates to the hiring policy section A4 of the Human Resources Policy. Questions, Councillor Jackson. Okay, first of all, in um, the report, it states that there is just one change, but going through there, there is one, two, three, four changes five changes to the policy that have not been identified in the report um, that is different from the original policy. Um, we had also discussed, and I think it was Councillor Olmsted that was in favor of it, that when we have old documents that we show the cross-outs and the changes to be made um, that it's easier than going back and forth, especially when we have it on an iPad where you have to flip through and compare paragraph to paragraph to determine um, what changes there are. And certainly with, I would recommend that um, this come back to a committee meeting first. Um, it hasn't been to a committee meeting with regards to these changes. And um, I think it should come to a committee meeting. Certainly what we talked about additionally, external postings may be simultaneously advertised in local media. That was discussed, but the other ones have not been discussed. Okay, I'm at a loss because I thought the whole thing was discussed. I thought the four points were discussed at committee. Mm, not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I've seen a change to the policy. It was just recommended that um, it was a verbal recommendation that we change the hiring policy to state that it would be simultaneously um, advertised the internal posting and the external posting. It's the only one I remember being discussed. Because that was the question. Do we, you know, do you follow the policy and advertise it first internally with regards to the two postings that we posted and then externally? And um, the recommendation was to come back and change the hiring policy to reflect that. It didn't, um, recommendation, um, there's number two has changed, um, number five has changed, number seven has changed. Um, if number five is changing, then number seven has to change. Uh, number eight has changed, and uh, number nine is, is new. Christine. On the advice of uh, the Human Resources Director at the County, Bruce Beakley, we are updating our human resources policies to follow the model and the format of the counties. Uh, which they were lifted from in the first place, but not particularly well formatted, which is why I wasn't able to do a strike through and add in because it's apples and oranges. It's a different template. It includes a lot of the language that we never had before uh, that is recommended. Um, anything that was applicable from the county policy, I added in. Certainly, I would be happy to schedule it um, into a committee meeting for June 1st for further discussion. Well, with a show of hands, you wanted to come back. All those in favor?
Well, we might as well. In favor of it coming back, all those opposed to it coming back. It should come to a committee meeting first and then come to a council meeting rather than just directly to a council meeting. That's the whole point of having a committee meeting. So, let's, all those in favor of bringing it back. We're going to, are we bringing the proposal or the report back to committee to be rediscussed before we go forward? The, the entire thing? Yeah. Okay. Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you. I just wondered maybe when we, could we go ahead and maybe the CAO could update us on what the changes are and we could discuss it this evening and pass it on. Is that a possibility or you want to bring it back to committee and and go through it. It, it doesn't matter to me. I, I understand that maybe we should know what the changes are, but I thought maybe that the CAO could walk it through and we could go ahead and vote on it. Is this time sensitive for getting our uh, job? No. no. Then in the consensus uh, I just want to slow to bring down it back. The, uh, the amount of work that's at the committee meetings, that's all. Okay. That's the well, only reason, uh, but if you want to bring her back, that's perfect. Well, yeah, we'll table this. And uh, And if a report could come back identifying all the changes, please. Yeah, that we will start from scratch at that. I'm going to put a D on that. All right. resolved that the Council of Township of Whitewater Region approves updates to the hours of work and overtime policy, Section D1 of the Human Resources Policy. Councillor Jackson. Um, I discussed with this with Christine just earlier before the meeting, and there are several, um, the one items that, that she did change, there are several, well, there is a spelling mistake, and then um, the title of the person isn't correct with the new position moving forward on another one. Um, and there are several, there's a couple of things that need to be identified as coming out. Um, and the report doesn't necessarily um, outline what perhaps overall needs to be changed. I don't know that we have ARENA staff employees. Um, so if um, she would like to see my comments uh, further than we can do that as corporate, ser usually committee chairs take a look at things before it goes on to um, the committees and then we can bring it forward. I don't think it's going to um, be a problem. It's not going to change the 91 hours at this point. I think we just need to, if we're going to update it, we might as well update it all. That's my point. As of this moment, I tabled it. Thank you. Moved by Kathy Rigger, seconded by Dave McKay. Be it resolved that the Council of Township of Whitewater Region receives and files the 2014-2016 OPP Street Strategic Plan. Any questions? Councillor Olmsted. Um, just, just going through this this uh, plan and seeing um, um, some of the statistics um, year over year, is, is there any way to substantiate any of these numbers? And the reason I ask that, not, not that this, this would happen, this particular case, but we have seen reports generated to uh, result in a certain decision that's already already been made or to to uh, fulfill a certain agenda. So I, it, it's in in these reports, 
the numbers are remarkably similar to prior years. So I, I'd, I'd like to know, is there any way we can confirm incidents or incident rates or, uh, you know, if you see, uh, you know, three assaults versus three assaults, same time last year, or sexual assault versus sexual assault last year. The numbers are, are, are very, very similar in most cases. So um, I don't know whether Kathy, uh, Councilor Rieger, whether you receive any reports to to show the incident rates or where these are happening? Or no, I don't. It would probably fall with the mayor and the Reed that sit on the, uh, the CPAC committees. So with, with having received a 30-some percent increase in the cost to placing to our, our constituents, I think, and this is probably our single biggest reason to have a, a, any kind of a, a tax increase this year. In fact, I think it's maybe all of our tax increase this year has to do with policing being over a quarter million dollar increase. I think, I think uh, our residents are going to be asking questions about you know, why and anybody looking at the numbers and that kind of thing. Uh, Councillor Jackson. So with regards to the OPP increase, it's, it's the way they've put in place, it's not, um, I don't know that we're anywhere near the actual cost of policing yet, and perhaps Marcia can advise me on that. Um, no, we're not. So um, it's based on the average, when the, it first came out it was based on the average of I think five years, but I could be wrong, three to five years of incidents your base rate plus the cost of incidence. So we're still not paying 100% um, of those base rates and incidents put together. Um, and each municipality that is not paying their rate, there was a certain amount of money each year that it would increase um, on the value of what we were getting charged from the OPP off office with regards to the flat rate and then they look at the average of the incidents again and uh, they move forward that way so it, um, there's going to be more increases to come and it's not yet at 100 percent cost just so you know and i don't know if they'll reveal too much of the incidents because they are private i don't know but perhaps mayor johnson can address that Starting in 2016, January 1st, anything from our, our base rate will be showing up as a bill, which will substantiate a lot of their uh, their numbers. Um, all of the ones that I've seen so far have gone up from their predictions, and uh, we can request all of the the reports. Um, we have. Uh, we have a right to see them, and uh, we can ask for them. And as a matter of fact, at C CPAC meeting, the last CPAC meeting, uh, we asked for more input, and um, we asked also that if there's anything starting to trend, that we're notified immediately so that we can put advice uh, and advertisements on our web page. And uh, we are going to do that as a group to try and offset uh, the extra costs, but um, the OPP cannot give out any information to anybody other than us about us, but we can give that information out to anybody we choose. We can share it with the, the uh, other municipalities. We can share it at council and open meeting. That's information for us. And uh, the direct question is that's very difficult to substantiate. A lot of it up until June, uh, January 1st is uh, just a numbers game, like it's averages and so. Now it should be substantiated 100% and we should be able to question the bill. Any other questions? All those in favor? Everybody has this? Okay. Yes. Okay. 
for county active, active transportation policy information. Any questions? Councillor Jackson. Are we looking at adopting this? Um, has Bill taken a look at it or the CAO taken a look at it to see if it would, might suit our needs? Uh, Christine. This is presented to you for information. There was a request when Steve Boland was here for him to send it to me to provide to you. This is county that we don't even vote on this. I realize that, but is it something that we want to adopt the same type of policy? This is more... Uh, With regards to if, if we're even looking at Grant Settlement Road, for instance, if we're looking at adding a bike lane for active transportation, which we've all been talking about, so shouldn't we have a policy in place? Uh, that's why I thought we were asking for a copy of it to um, kind of take a look at it and see how it can be adopted to our use. If we're considering it, if we're not considering active transportation, then it doesn't matter, but certainly around the council table, I've heard active transportation with regards to bike lanes, horse lanes, and stuff like that. So that's my question. Christine. And if there's interest, then I'll move that on to um, a committee agenda. Uh, perhaps the recreation chair might speak to that. Give me direction. Does it fall under recreation or does it fall under public works? Public works. That's what I thought. Okay, well, whatever it is. I brought it forward with another map. Tell me if you want to talk to me. Councillor Olmstead. Councillor, uh, well, I thought he had his hand up, but he was doing it on your behalf, Daryl. Thank Councillor, you, Councillor uh, Olmstead. I appreciate uh, your inquiring with the mayor. I uh, appreciate that. I think it was uh, I that uh, had requested this from Steve Bolin, and I, I don't care which committee, wh where you bring it or what. I, I just wanted more information on why or how we could go about or if we could even get the county to help us because I really think that if any road in the whole of Renfrew County needs to have a bicycle lane, it's the Grand Settlement Road. Somehow we need to bring this forward. I don't care whether we bring it in discussion or <clears throat> how we do it. I, I think it needs to be brought forward because I really feel that it not only help benefit our people in Whitewater Region, I think it would help also if you look at Grand Settlement, there's a lot of people all over the county that use it as well as outside the county. So whether it be recreation, which I understand, I can see where Christine is coming from, because bicycle lanes, to me, that's not traffic. That's, but if it's road construction, I, do, I don't care where, you, where it is brought up, but I think we need to discuss it and see if we can't somehow bring this forward or get a mandate and maybe have the county help us in some way. I, and I'm at a loss because I thought we were just asking him for his justification for what he was doing. Councillor McKay. I think Daryl's right. I think that that road, and maybe we could get some funds from Renfrew County to help build us a bike trail on that road. You read that document, you're not going to get 10 cents. Don't believe it. Alex. Yeah, we can bring this one forward. Uh, Councillor Olmstead. Um, I'd like to look into the requirements uh, for a county to take over a road. So, what what are the what are the touch points for a county to to is it is it simply uh, transportation counts or is it time of usage or what what are I, I did hear before that you know, it may be a trade off that they would trade one road for another or portions of roads. So, I, I'd like to understand what it takes for a county to, to take over a road. It's, uh, I don't think that road would be used a whole lot from you know, November to March or April, but from April to uh, September, October, 
there's heavy, heavy traffic and heavy equipment on that road. So uh, I'd like to understand if that road even has a chance to be taken over. I do know uh, some of the policy, and I can inform you that they don't go by their policy very much, and I don't know of them ever taking up a road in the past. They've downloaded substantially, but uh, we can ask for that to happen. One of the big criteria is is uh, gravel pits and heavy heavy roadways, but most of the gravel pits aren't on their roads. So, yep. Um, so if I may. Um that I, I understand that road at one time was a county road, so yes, they they'd probably have traffic counts at that time, as I think all, all county roads do. So I'd like to compare what that was when they downloaded that road to what they are today, because I'm sure when they downloaded it, we didn't have all these businesses up and down that road, whereas today oh. that, that is a destination throughout uh, the Valley, Ontario, Canada, worldwide, with, uh, with world-class events along that road now. So I, I would assume that the traffic count would be... Uh, multiple times over uh, what, what it used to be. Well, we can ask our uh, public works manager to do a traffic count. I think he's already done that, actually, and maybe he'll comment on that. We do have some from a couple years ago, but I can set the traffic counts up again to get okay. some more up-to-date ones. Okay. Councillor Jackson? And can we contact the county to see what it is that we... Um, require of them what we need to um, bring forth that recommendation to County Council? That would be a very good question yeah, for uh, Reeve Miller to present to the Roads Department. You just clarify that one more time, I'll make some notes. What exactly do you want? So if we wanted to recommend Grant Settlement Road be transferred back, back. to the County, what requirements do they require with regards to traffic count? What makes a county road? So you want to figure out a way to give it back to them, and that's the, yes. that's the plan. You just want to know how they're going to react. You well, put me on the front line. That's okay. 